Do not let your hearts be troubled, says the writer of John's Gospel. My Father's house has rooms to spare. Today, John Yambasu rests in one of those spare rooms that has been prepared just for him. Imagine this room with me for just a moment. It's filled with light and there are photos of the family he loves and his Bible is on the nightstand. His ordination certificate is on the wall next to his diploma from Candler School of Theology. And there are reminders all around of the children and the young people and the old people, those whose lives he impacted and transformed. And the closet. The closet is filled with those wonderful and colorful suits he loved to wear. And hanging next to his suits is a robe and a stole, a constant reminder of who God called John Yambasu to be, a child of God, a man of God, one who was called to proclaim the gospel in all that he did and all that he was. This room is filled with joy. Yet, our hearts are troubled today because imagining a life without John Yambasu has a void, a sense of emptiness that can never be filled by another. Yet, we find joy, generous joy in all that life was for John Yambasu. The way he said, thank you, can you hear it? The joy in his laugh and in his every step. So we gather today not because John Yambasu has died, but because John Yambasu lived and continues to live in all that he loved. He loved God, his family. He loved the people of Sierra Leone and he loved the United Methodist Church. When John Yambasu prayed, he ushered you into the throne room of God. He loved this church and was a unifying voice in the midst of division. I would say he was a force to be reckoned with. His death is a profound loss to the world. But I hear the voice of my friend reminding each and every one of us that we each have a role to play, to lead people to Jesus, to usher God's kingdom on earth as in heaven. He would remind us that nothing separates us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. He would remind us because John Nyambasu knew firsthand that the present suffering is nothing compared to the coming glory. That the whole creation waits breathless with anticipation for the revelation of God's sons and daughters that the creation itself lives out of hope, a hope that will set us free from slavery or decay and bring us into the glorious freedom of God's children. He would remind us that we are saved in hope. If we hope for what we don't see, we wait for hope in patience. That the Spirit comes to help in our weakness. He would remind us that we know that God works all things together for good. And he would remind us that nothing separates us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Can you hear Bishop Yambasu's voice borrowing from the letter to the Romans? Nothing separates us from the love of Christ, not a thing. And perhaps it was this knowledge that drove John Yambasu's passion to work for unity. It was this that drove his deepest passions to help the most vulnerable. When he could not stand the thought of children going to bed hungry, he responded. We could not stand the thought that those in need of health care were not being cared for. He responded. When he faced the church he loved divided, he could not stand it. He responded. John Yambasu 
was a man that lived out of his convictions, his understanding that nothing ought to separate you from the love of God, nothing. So friends, John Yambasu's funeral has been preached, not by me, not by those who have come before me and those who will come after me. John Yambasu's sermon has been preached by John Yambasu. He preached his own funeral sermon by the way he lived out his everyday life. He preached his sermon by being the voice of Jesus when it needed to be heard. He preached his sermon when he responded to the needs of the least and the lost. He preached his sermon when he said enough is enough. After the February 2019 General Conference, he preached his sermon the day he brought persons together from different theological ideologies and said, let's talk. He preached his sermon when he traveled time after time to Washington, D.C. and pleaded with the mediation team for a more Jesus-like way. He preached his sermon even on his last day as he traveled to bring a word of hope to a family who had just lost a loved one. Should we be so blessed to know in the very depth of our soul and with every fiber of our being that nothing ought to separate us from the love of God and not just know, but respond to do something about it. Bishop John Yambasu taught us to hold on to hope so that we might show the world that it is faith in Jesus that allows us to hold on to hope even when things seem dire, when hope doesn't seem possible, when things appear hopeless. It was Bishop John Yambasu that inspired. It was his courageous leadership and unwillingness to let things be and instead have the audacity to hope for a better way, a better tomorrow, because he knew. He knew that we are more than conquerors. Hear now Eugene Peterson from the message and how he says this. Do you think anyone is going to be able to drive a wedge between us and Christ's love for us? Trouble, hard times, hatred, hunger, homelessness, bullying, threats, backstabbing, none of this phases us because Jesus loves us. I'm absolutely convinced, Eugene Peterson says, that nothing, nothing living or dead, angelic or demonic, today or tomorrow, high or low, thinkable or unthinkable, absolutely nothing can get between us and God's love because of the way Jesus has embraced us. The best way we can honor the life of John Yambasu is to live life like it matters knowing that nothing can get between us and God's love. We must live out the legacy of John Yambasu by being ambassadors of God's unfailing and uncompromising love, living every day in joy, living every day for good in the world, living every day believing that God is with us, living every day bringing light into a dark world living every day with the knowledge that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we will be courageous and emboldened to not just bring the good news to the world that needs to hear it, but to be the walking around every day, living, talking, serving good news of Jesus, living like our lives and the lives of others depend on it. By the power of all that is within us, let us go forth into the world, resting in the legacy of our brother, John Yambasu. Thank you, John, for bringing life into us, even in the midst of death. Thanks be to God for the life of John Yambasu, a life that rests in your arms this day, O God, and will forever remain in our hearts. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.